Hello, and welcome back to me running into the door because I'm a genius and also my chair is in the wrong spot because I'm a professional. But anyway, welcome back to Lost Kingdoms slash rune slash this game slash shale passage shale passage or something. Anyway, we're going to be heading into here. This is a potentially long area. But hopefully I'm not an idiot and it shouldn't take too long. I will, however, give you a very small tip. Try and stay out of the center of the area if you want to avoid a lot of the battles, which I do here, if I'm going to be honest. There's your hint for how the level works, by the way. There's strange water tanks. Maybe you should do something with those. So we need to cross here. The water makes you really slow, and that's generally where the... Uh, battle uh, start triggers are in the water areas, so you can avoid a lot of them in this place, which is a bit unusual. Also, you're invulnerable while using cards, if you've forgotten for whatever reason. You have to break these, so there's a guaranteed four battles in this area, plus however many other ones you get. Just one of you? I mean, that's it? Well. Oh. Whatever we'll floats your boat, I suppose. It's gonna take two hits to kill him, sadly. I have very, very slightly adjusted my deck. Also, don't worry about going right. We'll head that way in a bit. We'll, however, grab this ferry. Very slowly grab this ferry. How many ferries are in this place? Five again? Six? I don't know how many ferries are in any of these places. I do basically tell you, telling you how switches work. That is a switch. We will push that later, but not right now. What we will do, though, is attempt to run over here and smash the crap out of this water tank for no reason. I don't even know why there's water tanks in this sewer. I mean, it's a freaking sewer. I'm stuck on this dude, so... Abuse and vulnerability! And then... Get hit anyway. Causes. The dude with the whip, by the way, he's actually fairly dangerous. It's unfortunate. His whip makes that little fire column, and that fire column will continue to hit you after his hip his whip goes off. His hip breaks. That's what I was gonna say there, clearly. Dark Raven getting some serious XP out of this place. The back door to the castle's locked. There's your second hint for this area. You need a key. Now I believe. One of these chests, I think, has a card in it. One of these, uh, not chests. What are these? Uh? Hello. Would you like to come over here and spit at me? I mean, I don't want to use a card to break it. So it's that one. All right. Good to know. Except we have to use a card to hurt them anyway, because freaking whatever. We can't pick that up in battle, so I'm just gonna kind of hang out here and hope this dude does his job. He seems to be doing pretty darn good so far. Gotta say. Again, I don't know where all the treasure is, so undoubtedly I'm going to miss a lot of the hidden treasure like this card here. We get a giant crab! Basically, I during the test game I inadvertently broke one of those barrels while being confused in this area. So that gave me the card and I actually remembered that. This is the last area I did in my test game. Hello? We got fire and water, apparently. Ow! Those dudes hurt, but they're generally easy enough to dodge. Unless I do that like an idiot, which I do sometimes, you know. That's how it goes, I suppose. It's because I'm in the water. That's the problem right there. Did you just... Okay, I thought he killed my skeleton in the process of dying somehow. Good job, skeletons. Don't pin me in the corner, man. It's rude. There's quite a few treasures in this area. Also, encounters in this area. Oh good, a whip dude. Oh look, our Banshee. I actually really like the Banshee because it gives you extra experience. It also does a boatload of damage. We only have one of those, sadly, but look at that experience. It's ridiculous. Easy to level that card up. 
You can only use it twice per card that you have in the deck, but still. Look, a skeleton card, because we needed like 70 more of those. Sea monk cards are nice to have. I would like to get that blue fairy, but we're in water, I'll never catch them. Another skeleton card. Great. There's actually a certain wall, a certain side of the wall you're supposed to stick on, but I never remember, so... I just pick a side, basically. I believe that's the last water tank. Go, skeletons! They very ineffectually and slowly attempt to murder these things. Well, one of them was dead. Could have used the Banshee again. Could have used the Banshee again. That seems like a reasonable idea. Like, it still counts stuff as you're picking it up. That's my favorite part. Have we passed a... Card station? Save station? Whatever those things are called. Deck point. So if we have, I miss a fairy. But I don't think we have, so I'm gonna run on the assumption that we haven't actually missed a fairy yet. I would like to grab you without getting a battle. Well, that'll do, I suppose. There's two deck points in this level. I think that's the first one. Yeah, that's the first one, because there's the fairy. I was confused for a moment there. You can throw a card where to do to do. Hold the card button. Have you played this game before? Our next task is to get a... Actually, no, we have to go over here. I had forgotten that this will actually suffice for getting the treasure chest over there. Because it is in a box. You must destroy the box in order to get to the treasure. The meaty treasure inside. Have a, have a Mandragora while I go over here and break this. In fact, have a skeleton that's almost dead while you're at it. Oh, I actually straight up killed that. I wanted to weaken both of them, but I ended up killing one on accident. Oh, well, that dude's fire, so murder the Mandragora. The skeleton's dead, so... May as well get rid of the Mantrap. I keep calling it Mandragora. It's not a Mandragora. I've played the game before, trust me. I know it's hard to believe, but... I can read names. Sometimes. Not very frequently, but sometimes. This is actually the first... Uh, that tells you you've managed to accomplish an objective, by the way. This is actually the first area that is reasonable to grind, especially early game. Running Bird is actually an interesting card. I tend to like using those, especially with the man trap cards, because they're so slow. But uh, the running word makes you, you and your independent cards faster. Which is nice. Turns out that's not the direction to avoid this battle. With a giant crab! And a skeleton that's nearly dead. If I'm going to use this summon, I'd like to hit both of you with it. Would you like to come hither, giant enemy crab? Would you like to participate in the battle? Nice water effects game. Nice attack range game. It'll do. I can try and lick this dude to death, because he's hurt. Oh, freaking getting stuck in the water with this dude is the worst. Just gonna lick you to death? Is that an option? Not quite, as it turns out. Well... Man trap. Thank you. Good fight. <laughs> Fantastic job. It's not actually much left of this dungeon now. By the way, there's that switch down there that we were next to at the very start of the level, basically. We will be heading down there shortly and thus using said switch. Also, Venus Spider. Also, skeleton. Can you stop giving me skeletons, game? Sweet Jesus. Lizard men are fine, I guess, although we already have too many of those, I suppose. Let's stack our deck with some more things here. Let's have a giant crab. We have a ghoul. We don't need a sea monk. We have a running bird, why not? A mummy. A lizard man. Some skeletons. Sure, we just have like 50 skeletons. 
And by 50, I mean four. Don't worry about the math, it's hard. Once you've broken all the tanks, you can run down here. It'll trigger a battle. A boss battle with a relatively easy enemy. The minions he has with him are actually more annoying than he is. Now, optimally, I would like to gather as many of these as I can together, but that's not always physically possible. So this will do. This might not even do that much damage. They are fire, though. Eh, killed one of them. I don't know why it only killed one of them. That's, uh, you're useless. You're not very useful now, but I probably will use you. We'll use the Venus Spider. It does the same AoE attack it normally does, which is nice, because it, it can hit multiple times. Now, One of the few cards that actually can, as well. Let's get rid of this dude. That way we get maximum experience out of the fight. And... let's see... Let's go ahead and summon you. We'll summon our man trap as well. So now we can run really fast, as long as he doesn't kill himself like an idiot. Or as long as I don't kill everything like an idiot. Alright, well he's just gonna walk into things apparently. Uh, what do I want to get the experience here? I mean, getting a skeleton some easy XP wouldn't be the worst thing I've done, so let's try and do that. I hate this fight, by the way. Particularly that AoE. Thankfully it doesn't interrupt your... It's an old N64 sound effect there. Thankfully it doesn't interrupt your enemy, your attacks or whatever. 240 for the skeleton, though. I will take it. And we get a key! Rejoice! We've solved the puzzle! Hopefully we don't get into an encounter on the way back down. Thankfully the way back down is conveniently placed right here. And don't worry about, you know, being super speedy on this switch. It's actually a remarkably slow door. It opens at about ten times the speed it closes. And actually, the second time you use the switch, you happen to need to use it twice for whatever reason, it skips that cutscene, so you can actually get over to this door before it's even fully opened. Remotely fully opened. Hello, we're here. Rejoice! There's one more fairy, I think, somewhere. I'd like to be able to see. A dragonoid. I think those are pretty good. There's the fairy. You should try a capture throw on one of them. That is a thing I currently do not do, because none of the monsters here are actually that interesting. I should have done a capture throw on some of the stuff in the last level that we found. But I didn't. Another carbuncle, I'll take it. And a maelstrom card, which is another one of the independent trap card things. Not necessarily very good, but it does exist. It's also another encounter that, t that tends to trigger right here. Thankfully we managed to avoid it, because I want nothing to do with it. Level cleared! We got our 5 star rating, let's see if we actually managed to get a decent card out of this. Mmm, no. Sadly we missed the mine flayer over there. We got two giant crabs, which are alright, and one of the whip dudes, which are actually pretty good. It's a dragonoid, that's what they're called. I've played the game very shortly before. And from this point on is stuff beyond my test game, so for all intents and purposes, I'm really not going to remember any of it. And I don't think that was enough to hit 20 fairies, so I'm not even going to bother going to the fairy house. Which is just a weird place to be, if you ask me. It's me again. Hello, Gerd. We'll talk to Gerd. An interesting story. Sure, we're curious. The Dalnok Valley. This is one of the bonus levels. Should I explain it again? Nope. Appreciate it, huh? What cards does she have? A wizard card! Hmm. Not too bad of a card there. Sand Golem, I don't care about. Red Lizard. Archer trees are decent. 
We got great card art in this game, I'll give them that much. Probably not gonna buy any cards though, unless we sell a bunch of skeletons or something. Oh, you go into Archer Tree. Interesting. You can't do anything new. You probably can't do anything new. You could get, you got stuff. Juggernaut and Playground. I don't like the Playground. What's the Juggernaut? It is an independent. Circle around the player. Ah. Apparently it's very much like the Carbuncle, except it looks freaking sweet, apparently. It's only another thousand to see the next one, so there's our running bird. It doesn't take much to get it changed, thankfully, because it doesn't do damage. Ooh, the Crystal Rose. These are good, if I recall. They're weapon cards, so it would replace some of our independence with weapon cards, but... And it costs 2,000 XP, but they're pretty good weapon cards. At least they were in the second game. Um, anyone else got enough XP to do something interesting? I don't think so. Play Grant. Giant B. Wood power up. Powers up all wood creatures while simultaneously having the power of any earth creatures. Does not actually attack anything. Hmm. Interesting. I will take one, though, because Playground doesn't attack anything either, so it's not like we're losing something here. But it does mean I have to be careful about using this and Earth Creatures at the same time, I suppose. Or Earth Cards in general. I don't think anyone else had anything interesting I wanted. I mean, I could get an Archer Tree. I could just save up some more and see what we can get down the line there. Yeah... I think we'll keep saving. Wanna sell cards? Because we have a whole bunch of freaking skeletons. We really, at most, need four of any given card, if I'm gonna be honest here. At least some of these cards will be converted, and thus we won't have four of the card anymore, but, you know, we don't need that many skeletons, game. We don't need that many Dark Ravens. Probably three Dark Ravens is fine. I have 180 gold. I didn't want to talk to you. Powerful force behind the fog. Is there anything I want to buy? I want to buy that wizard. But it's 240. And there's no guarantee it'll be there when we come back. But I don't want to sell any more cards. So we'll just call it there. There's our secondary quest. Which we may do. I don't know the difficulty of that area. Or we may have it head over to the Castle Grail. Probably Castle Grail, but for now, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time for new stuff. By God, new stuff. Everyone likes new things. At least I do. Also tweak my deck some, because we got a weird deck. I'll tell you that much. Thanks for watching. See you then.